The other day, I ended up making a video discussing, ranting, rambling disorganizedly, about Nintendo's recent decision to remove the eShop and the Wii U Shoppy Shop from the digital shoppy shopping shoppingness and what that could mean for prices for games on those two consoles hard copy going forward into the future. It doesn't look bright. It doesn't look bright at all. I ended up editing that video's uh, video description. I ended up editing the uh, recent prices for some of the games that I didn't decide to look for <laughs> because, you know, an hour into it, I just didn't feel like it anymore, but I ended up putting the updated prices as of the day of the video's launch, as of the day of that editing, and all that should be taken care of until the next time I feel like ranting about prices and video games and DLC and, and a company's desire to make money, yet decisions on making money not being as money-making as making money could possibly make money. So, but hey, look at me, I'm just the observer talking about things that I see, and that is all. Speaking of things that I have seen, I have seen The Scribbler a while ago. A while ago, mainly. Hey, but then I just gonna vibrate on the phone. Where was I? Um, 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 oh yes, talking about this scribbler. I watched this a couple months ago, but never decided to make a video about it. But hey, I hadn't made a dollar bit in the review in a long time, so why not make one today? This is the scribbler Turbo Extreme. Unzip your head. Okay. Starting a bunch of names, there's, there's a lot of names here, there's a lot of names. A lot of people are on here, many of names of which I don't recognize, especially when I'm looking at it from upside down. We have Kate Cassidy, Garrett Dillahunt, Michelle Trachtenberg, I recognize that one. Uh, Michelle Imperoni, Michael Imperoni, Gina Gershon, I, I recognize that one. Sasha Gray, Kunal Navar, Nayar. Ashlyn Yenny, Lisa Judd, Liza Dushku, I definitely recognize her. Speaking of it, Michelle Trachtenberg and Eliza Dushku are alumni from... Uh, alumni from this little show right here. I have all the seasons, I don't feel like dragging them all out, but... Buffy the Vampire Slayer, an excellent, excellent product of the late 90s to early 2000s. You should definitely take a look at it, and definitely take a look at Angel as well. And I might even just make a video about this show eventually. But, that's all I'm going to say about that. But, Michelle Trachtenberg, if I remember correctly, plays Buffy's younger sister. Unless it's another Michelle Trachtenberg. Eliza Dushku plays Faith. Another Slayer in the Buffyverse, Billy Campbell, I'm not too sure about, but that's the only other name on this on the DVD. But there you go, you got two alumni from Buffy the Vampire Slayer in the Stripler. No idea why, maybe John Suits was involved in, in, in Buffy, maybe. No, allegedly, don't know for sure. Let's see what else we got on the back here. Accelerator Media and New Artists Alliance present, in association with Caliber Media Company and Night Sky Productions, a Cohen Suits production. See, you gotta go through all of this jargon and association and all this other stuff presenting to make it to the actual people who made it right here. A Conan Suits production. A Cohen Suits production, not Conan, like K-O-N, C-O-N-O-N, no, 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 it's, it's C-O-W-A-N, Cohen and Suits production, yes, yes, yes. Who's Cohen? Well, it says here, Gabriel, Gabriel, Gabriel Cohen produced it, he's the producer, and John Suits is the director. So there you go. I don't think anything else here is worth talking about. Paul Wheat from ne Nerdly gives it five stars. One of the best superhero origin movies committed to celluloid. I don't know what 
committing to celluloid is, but yeah. Let me put this up. The scribbler takes place in like this in-between house. An in-between house to my knowledge in this film's universe. They, do, they justify it as basically being an apartment complex for people who are in-between into proper society that mm, that they're in between going from where it could range from any sort of psychological malady to a disorderly conduct that was reportedly produced reported in the real world lively liveliness that then they got into the copy cop and in the asylum and then they get out of the asylum and they get placed in the the in-between house I, I didn't pay too much attention to the first act of this is it good? Um, <laughs> it's pretty trippy, but I wouldn't say it's bad. But it, it you got to pay attention to that first act, because if you don't pay attention, you're going to be lost. This is a kind of superhero movie, tale. I'm not exactly sure the origins of such a superhero story, because I've never heard of the scribbler before, before finding it at the yeah <sighs> we have our star played by I, I think i want to say it's katie cassidy our main character lady let's see actually katie cassidy yes katie cassidy stars as suki now if you've watched split by um m night shyama lama ding dong if you watched split by shyama shyamalan you will know that the main character in that, the main villain, the bad guy, has like 25 or some personalities, alters, ranging from absolutely psychotic to just an art critic, basically. <laughs> but there's a lot of people in that head. And that's basically what Suki has. She's got that same problem going on with her. She's got a lot of people in her head. And she went to asylum, whatever,ness to get that treated, to get that taken care of. One of her alters is known as the Scribbler. Now, the Scribbler cannot speak. The Scribbler only scribbles on the walls. And when they write things, they write things backwards. They complete backwardsness and all that stuff, right? So you have to hold whatever they write up in front of a friggin' mirror so that whatever they say is read properly. So if you were to read this by the scribbler, this would be in reverse. You know, the R would be over here and every letter would be backwards. Basically like that, yes. And they write on the walls, they write on their hands. That's how they communicate. They cannot use verbal wording wordness. And the funny thing is, Suki, one of the alters, can speak. And so together, Suki and her alter, the scribbler, must survive this treatment that they're going through and this treatment is to get rid of all of the altars in her head using this little cerebro device that they put onto her head and shock the other altars out of her brain <laughs> I have no idea it, 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 it's just how they write it but there are other tenants in the building and they start to drop off one by one in a sort of whodunit type of manner. Each one is a little eccentric. One of them is pretty much a nymphomaniac. Another one is phobic to clothes. Yeah, phobic to clothes. They are extremely critical of any and every type of clothing to the point that they would rather just not wear any because any type of clothing is completely unfashionable to this person. So, yeah. That's one of the um, tenants. 
And then there's some other throwaway characters. One with that has a big snake coiled around their, their neck. The boa lady, I call her the boa lady. And then there's some other throwaway guys that just are there to die. And then there's this dude, whose name I can't remember, but he's friends with Suki and the other altars of the Scribbler character. And this dude doesn't want Suki to get better, so as to say. He wants her to keep her altars because he thinks they're fun to be around. He's befriended some of them. But this treatment that she's going through has gotten rid of most of them until there's only two altars left, Suki and the Scribbler. And the Scribbler doesn't show up unless there's, like, great peril or stuff going on. And then we'll get into that in a bit. So eventually we learn that Suki likes this dude. And the Nymphomaniac Lady likes this dude. And this dude is Nymphomaniac himself, and he has slept with all the women in the apartment complex with the exception of Suki. But he wants to. Or he wants to sleep with one of the altars, I don't know. So, in retribution, this extremely jealous, attached Nymphomaniac Lady starts to kill off all of the other people in this apartment in-between house. In the order that he slept them in, slept with them in, leading finally to Suki facing off with this lady, and this lady uses the Cerebro machine to unlock her superpowers. She becomes Electric Lady. The Electric Lady faces off against the Scribbler, who is also superpowered. They have a fight. And um, the electric lady dies, and the scribbler becomes like this little anti-hero, standing up for mental problems and things of that nature. At its heart, it is very um, harmless. It's not in your face. It's not bad. It's not good. I couldn't tell you if it's based off a comic, because I don't read comics. I read manga, manga, but I don't read comic books, so I wouldn't, I couldn't tell you if this is based off a comic. If it does, great, you might want to look at that instead, but this is an okay superhero movie. It feels pretty indie because Cohen and Suits production company, all these other people are just there to present it or are in association with Cohen and Suits Productions. So, there, oh, there, here's one of the characters right here. This is the lady that kills everybody. And, um, this is the dude that sleeps with everybody. This is the scribbler. Let me see, is Eliza Dushku on here? Um, no. Eliza Dushku's not on here. Who does Eliza Dushkushku play? She plays, um, this secret agent investigator lady. The investigator lady comes to investigate the dead bodies that are dying. Bodies. The bodies are dying. The people are dying. She comes to investigate that, and Suki becomes one of her prime suspects, but she's very calm and understanding to Suki, trying to get her to tell her story about what happened here, because the whole entire movie takes place basically from her recollection past tense type of thing so Suki is telling Elias Dushku what's going on what happened how everybody died and then we have the finale finale at the end of that that's it um I don't know who Michelle Trachtenberg, Trachtenberg, Trachtenberg plays I couldn't tell you if you want to look that up you can go for it I'm pretty sure you might be able to find this on Tubi. Like everything else I've covered in the Dollar Bin series, almost all of them could probably be found on Tubi, so let's just double check that. Okay, surprisingly, it's actually not on Tubi. That's surprising. Well, I did check through dozens of countries to see where it might be available. And if you're in France, you might be able to find it on Prime Streaming, Prime Video. Otherwise, Amazon Prime Video. Otherwise, other than that, you're going to have, in America, the land of America, 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 people, you'll have to go to iTunes to find it 
for three ninety nine standard edition to buy or three ninety nine to rent buy or rent whatever. And honestly, I think that's too much because I got this for, as the title of the video says, one dollar. Which means if you can't find it for free or for a dollar, I don't know what to tell you. But maybe you could check your own local dollar stores. Check the Dollar Tree if you want to go there. At the Dollar Tree, you might be able to find a DVD section where they all have all sorts of various types of indie films. You might get lucky there, but outside of that, I don't know where you're going to find the Scribbler, but if you do manage to find it somehow, yeah, i give it a watch. I wouldn't pay more than 10 bucks. I wouldn't pay more than 5 bucks. If you want to pay three ninety nine on iTunes, you go right ahead, but... <laughs> I got it for a dollar. You know, these are the dollar bin movies. That's what the dollar bin playlist is for. All of these films could be found somehow for a dollar. Or for free on streaming. So if you can't find it for a dollar or for free on streaming, you're going to end up paying more than I did. But is it worth watching regardless? Yeah, I guess, I guess it is. It is probably worth watching just to see for yourself how the effects look, how all of the weird stuff and trippiness of the whole film goes through, goes down. If you want to go through that, then by all means, you go through it and f come to your own conclusion on what to think about this movie. I it did enjoy it. I did. I wouldn't give it a high rating. I wouldn't give it a low rating. I'd probably give it about a 6 out of 10 to me. And, and 5 is average. You know, 5 isn't bad. You know how they say on on your math test or whatever, you know, they say, Oh, a 60 is failing, and a 50 is below failing, you know? They all say that. But in the rating system, 5 out of 10 is average. It means it's not bad, but it's not good. So 6 out of 10 is slightly above average, which means it's not bad, but it's better than barely average. It's not good, but it's not bad. Give it a look.